This exhibition entitled Ruth Weisberg Reflections Through Time offers us a wonderful opportunity to view the works of one of Los Angeles' most celebrated figurative artists. Without being a true retrospective, we see through the grouping of works a through line of what Ruth Weisberg has been drawn to throughout her career. The unique aspect of this exhibition is that it's an overview of my work from 1972 to the present. And it's all works on paper, but drawing and printmaking have been very key techniques for me. I'm very involved in monotype. I teach drawing at University of Southern California and have for many years. So this is not secondary. These are not just studies. These are very much uh, works I'm committed to. And when I was able to tour this exhibition the first time, I, who know my work so well, really saw it in a new light. I saw even more clearly the relationships, the interrelationships thematically, how I use the human figure again and again, whether it's children or grown-ups, in order to reflect journeys. People are leaving. People are trying to enter into other moments of time. Sometimes they can and sometimes they can't. Often there's a sense of backdrops that they're standing in front of. There's something theatrical in many of these images. It's such a gift to the artist when there's an exhibition that allows you your own retrospective view of your work. And this is clearly the case with this show. A great example of Ruth's interest in theater and dance as an example converges with her interest in art history. You see here, for example, the famous figure Gilles Watteau's figure entering into the dance studio. So the convergence of art history and her personal experiences are paramount. Film also had an impact on Ruth Weisberg. And in this other work, we see this convergence of a sort of Gilles-like figure parting the curtains, opening a subject to the great scene in the great classic film, Children of Paradise, a remarkable film produced during the Nazi occupation in France in the mid-40s. Astounding that it could even be done. But as an artist, one projects where I was versus where I could have been simultaneously. And the era of World War II and that occupation. Weisberg's interest in art history and re-envisioning works by great masters has not escaped many museums. In 1999, she was the first artist to be afforded a solo exhibition at the Huntington Library in San Marino. In this case, Ruth has created a drawing that related to a monumental drawing she created based upon the work by William Blake, The Circle of the Lustful from the Divine Comedy. She also holds the special distinction of being the first contemporary painter to have a solo exhibition at the Norton Simon Museum in Pasadena, where she was invited to do the same, to create a body of work based upon any painting of her choosing. And she chose the remarkable masterpiece by Cagnacci and created a series of paintings and drawings. And here we have an astounding example of a monumental scale drawing, re-envisioning the work of Cagnacci. In fact, retelling the story in a uniquely Ruth Weisberg manner. One of the monumental drawings related to that series is shown here in this work entitled Island. I'm so pleased by this exhibition because it allows me 
also the opportunity to understand the themes in my work and how certain themes repeat, how I relate to both our history, Jewish history, and family history. This particular drawing, this is a very ambitious large-scale drawing, was done for an exhibition at the Norton Simon Museum, and my daughter-in-law, Laura, is in the pose that is inspired by a Guido Cagnacci late Renaissance painting. Although I have warned people who are marrying into my family that unless they're willing to model, it's no go. Here Ruth places herself as the protagonist in a work questioning Veronese, changing a meaning of a work but asserting herself and pondering its relevance today. And in another example, we see Ruth Weisberg engaged with a great painting by Corot entitled Interrupted Reading. A poignant aspect of Ruth's works is her dealing with the notion of memory. And in many instances, there are these references to children. And in this work, entitled On the Journey, we see that same remembrance of children at play, dancing in a circle. But we can't help but wonder the notion of trains and dovetailing with works like Together Again, is this indeed a remembrance of a playful, innocent time, or is it conjuring references to the Holocaust? Ruth's interest in Judaism has been very clearly seen in a great numbers of works. She holds a very unique distinction, a great honor to have been commissioned indeed to illustrate the Passover Haggadah. In what is surely one of Ruth Weisberg's most iconic works, we see here in Waterborne, a self-portrait which is layered with meanings as Ruth is now about to have a child, her first child, and the artist herself is floating in this rather fetal position, and it speaks to a very important moment, not only in her life, but in terms of womanhood and the emergence of women in the art world and the general social scene. So this work from 1973 had very special meaning and very special importance for any numbers of reasons, besides being an absolutely magnificent original lithograph. One of the real rewarding aspects of this exhibition is seeing my own life pass before me, as it were, and I was remembering in viewing this that I was much more concerned about having a handmade edition of paper made, oval-shaped paper by the Twin Rocker Paper Company in Indiana, than putting together a layette for my baby-to-be. You know, other people were gathering practical things for their babies. I was having paper made. And then after my daughter Alicia was born, I did this portrait of her on this egg-colored, egg-shaped, beautiful handmade paper. The image below is called Messenger. It's from 1986. It again features my daughter, who, of course, is uh, now uh, in her late adolescence. And uh, she is acting out the role of the messenger or the angel in a kind of folkloric Jewish tale about the birth of children. And she is floating, which is states of the body, whether in water or air, in which one defies gravity. One of the things about this exhibition is that it covers a really large span of time, from 1972 
to the present, 2015, and reveals that my core passions have really remained the same. I am always interested in the passage of time, the effects of memory, and a great source of inspiration is art history, particularly the Venetians and other um, Renaissance painters, and, and 19th century painters too. And in this case, I was inspired very directly by an amazing 19th century painter, Maurice Gottlieb. He is one of the first Jewish artists to come to prominence. You know, there were a lot of barriers to Jews being an artist, just like there were barriers to women being artists. You know, they were cut off from being trained, you know, from apprenticing. He lived in Poland in the second part of the 19th century, died tragically young, and was a prodigy. I mean, he was a brilliant painter. His most famous painting lives in the Tel Aviv Museum, and it's uh, about Yom Kippur. And I was struck when I first saw it that he looked so much like my son. Of course, one of the other themes in my work is incorporating family and friends, but particularly family. My children are really an important subject to me, and this resemblance between my son and Maurice Gottlieb's self-portrait really inspired me to do this painting, where my son posed as Maurice, and um, we have some of the autobiography of the artist. That was his mother. This was his fiance. This is the fiance who, in the end, broke up with him and probably caused his very early demise. He kind of let himself go and died of pneumonia. I'm very excited about my current project. I am doing the second of two seven feet by three feet stained glass windows for the USC Caruso Center Catholic Church. They're Old Testament, both of them. One is the beginning, Genesis, the first four days of creation. And this is a study for the third day of creation when God created, he was very busy. He created trees, mountains, and rivers on the third day. One thing I really like about this exhibition and the way that Jack designed it is the way the works are clustered. In modernism and even in postmodernism, there was a value placed on isolating each work. Each work was to be seen absolutely cleanly and purely by itself. Of course, that's not how artists or certainly not how I work. I work with ideas flowing into each other and I'm influenced by things I've done earlier in terms of the work that I'm presently doing. I see things in much longer uh, pattern of uh, themes and images. So I'm really delighted that there are so many pairs or clusters in this exhibition where the people who come to see the show can also see how things relate to each other. The themes and the images and the ideas are all nourishing each other.